Okay, so my name's James. I'm with Allied Furnace and AC out of Kenmore, Washington, which is near Seattle. My phone number is 206-604-0092, and I've decided to shoot this video today on um, as a supplement to my original video on YouTube called The Right Way to Install a Duckless Mini Split. Um, in the previous video, the first video, I decided to talk in detail about how to properly form a flare fitting for the line set on the ductless mini split system. Uh, as I mentioned before in the first video, uh, it's extremely critical to install your flares in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Just to recap, you know, there's a whole process to form the flare properly, to measure your flare, and then, then to torque it down properly so that the flare will never get loose and will never start to leak for any reason and will last a life, the expected life of the product. Uh, this video here is just to talk about some other things when it comes to ductless mini splits. Uh, the unit that I'm uh, uh, installing today is a York Affinity ductless mini split. I'm a dealer for York and I've been very happy with the ductless mini split product uh, manufactured by York. Um, this uh, product here is part of their Affinity line, it's their premium line. It has a uh, 20 sear rating, a 20 sear rating and a 9.2 HSPF rating which is pretty respectable for air conditioning and heating. Um, another major advantage to the Affinity product line is that it does use Mitsubishi compressors. Uh, most people agree that those are the best compressors for ductless mini splits. And the York Affinity line has uh, all uh, Mitsubishi compressors. On top of that, the pricing on the product is very reasonable. That's why I like to install them for my clients. So some other techniques that I wanted to talk about today has to do with running your line set. You can see here that I've gone ahead and put a my entire line set inside line hide. And when you look at other installation videos on YouTube, um, a concern that I had just was that the installer simply ran the line set on the outside of the home. So there was these bare pipes, uh, refrigeration lines and electrical uh, just attached to the side of the home. And while that may even be acceptable to code, it's just aesthetically, it doesn't look very professional. And um, I just believe that the line hide product here, you know, again, it's not expensive and it just greatly improves the overall appearance of the finished product here. Another advantage to the line hide product is that it protects the line set. Uh, the line sets on the ductless mini split have a rubberized foam insulation and uh, both the uh, quarter inch and three eighths line are insulated. And that's one unique thing about the ductless mini splits is both, the line, both lines are insulated, not just the suction line. Um, normally, you know, throughout the year, the sun's ultraviolet rays will deteriorate that rubberized insulation and cause it to fall off. Typically it starts happening after about 10 years, it's really becomes readily apparent that the, the insulation is just heavily deteriorated. But anyway, if you run it all in line hide, that'll protect it all and then the insulation won't come off, which will help to protect the efficiency rating of the product. Um, so there's a lot of advantages to using line hide. You can see here, I've gone ahead and um, run the line set out here. There's a special tapered uh, uh, termination fitting here. As I continue to run my line set out, I then wrap the line set with a special ultraviolet resistant tape. Again, just to protect the insulation and make sure that it would not ever come off. So I've wrapped it the rest of the way with this tape. Again, just to make sure that that lasts the life of the product like it was designed to. The goal here is to make sure that this product here is able to last, you know, the lifetime uh, that the manufacturer intended it to. Uh, we want to make sure that there's no installation errors that are going to make it so this thing has to be, has to, you know, get regular maintenance. Um, so anyway, uh, there's that. Another thing I want to point out here is that this cable that's uh, for the uh, communicating line that goes between the uh, controls on the ductless unit, on the outdoor condenser unit, and then the head that's on the opposite side of this wall. It's a special type of cable, and other installation mistakes that I've seen other installers make is they simply will use a, um, a Romex cable, like a 14.3 Romex. Uh, that is not acceptable by either by the manufacturer. It's also not acceptable according to the National Electric Code because a uh, Romex cable is not rated for outdoor use. It cannot, it's not rated for exposed use in any way, shape, or form. 
Uh, they make a special type of cable. It's this stuff here that's ultraviolet resistant. It's also rated for exposed location. Another thing that's unique about this cable is that when you look at the T-stat wire that's used for other um, AC units and stuff like that, other low voltage controls, uh, that AC wire, is, uh, that low voltage control wire is a low voltage wire, uh, operates at 24 volts approximately. And because it's a low voltage wire, you're allowed to actually just, you know, uh, zip tie it and attach it right to the line set and run that all the way back to the condenser that way. Now there's a unique thing about this cable here, which is that it's not technically low voltage because it actually runs as high as, I believe, 50 volts. Uh, that's because of that, you're actually not allowed to actually attach it to the line set and run it with the line set. Uh, there's an electrical code that requires that it have to be, you know, a run by itself. And uh, so that's why I deliberately don't just uh, zip tie it right to the line set. Instead, I go ahead and um, I have my electrician go ahead and zip tie it, um, you know, uh, uh, use some uh, uh, straps to just uh, strap it inside the uh, line hide. And then when it comes out here, I then specifically have my electrician go ahead and um, zip tie it here to the uh, conduit for the uh, high voltage and, uh, and run it over that way. Uh, that way we don't, we, we satisfy that particular code requirement. So those are the uh, things that you ought to be aware of if you're going to go ahead and install a ductless mini split on the electrical side of things. Again, there's a special type of cable that we use. Um, and um, on the refrigeration side, it's always a really, really good idea to use line hide. Second thing I want to point out here is that this unit has been installed on a pad. Now I've seen other installers, you know, they really enjoy using the wall bracket kits and I believe on the previous video I did use a wall bracket and just mounted the condenser unit to the side of the home. Um, ideally it is a better idea to go and put it on a pad whenever possible. Uh, the reason why is even though a ductless unit, an inverter driven ductless unit is extremely quiet, there's still a tiny bit of vibration and that vibration can transmit through the wall. Now this is a bedroom wall here. Uh, we want to make this system as quiet as possible and that's why we elected just to put this on a pad. I've gone ahead and uh, leveled the pad out. I've driven these stakes that are going through the feet of the ductless unit and then going through the pad are actually uh, 12 inches long. And uh, they go right through the pad and that holds the pad in place and also holds the ductless unit in place so it can't ever go anywhere. Um, so again, it's a good idea to use the pad just to make sure the system will be as quiet as, as you can possibly make it. Uh, and so that way no uh, vibrations and sounds will transmit into the home. So lastly, I wanna get back to the refrigeration side of things. Just to recap once more, those flares have got to be torqued down as properly. Uh, the next technique is to properly dehydrate and, pre and pressure check your system. Again, this is another big mistake that I saw installers commit uh, on other videos you see on YouTube. Uh, the, you, it's, it's imperative that you take uh, a nitrogen cylinder and go ahead and pressurize your line set here up to 300 PSI ideally and hold it there for at least an hour just to make sure that you're 100% confident that your system does not leak. So I've already gone ahead and done that and then after I was confident that the system was leaking, I then bled out the nitrogen and then hooked up my vacuum pump and, uh, and um, uh, put the system under an intense vacuum. I went ahead and took my vacuum gauge here and I was able to get it all the way down to 210 microns. And because this is a really small line set, that's a relatively easy thing to do. Uh, it took less than 20 minutes just to get it all the way down to uh, 210 microns. Again, you'll see other installers when they did install a vacuum pump, uh, they were saying maybe 800 microns is okay, or excuse me, 500 microns. I remember one guy saying uh, that's not quite low enough. There could still be some moisture in the system and some air left in the system at that high of a reading. But if you get it down to at least 300, you'll be okay. Uh, if you got more time, though, get it down to 200. Uh, the better the vacuum, the greater the vacuum. Uh, the less likely there'll be any air in the system, and therefore there won't, there'll be less likely any moisture in the system. Uh, it's extremely important to go in and put the system under a vacuum, because if you just have air in your line set, and then you just go and charge it up like that, well then all that air is gonna recondense back, all the moisture in the air is gonna recondense, 
and then that uh, moisture is just going to go right into the, the compressor and contaminate the oil in the compressor. You know, and then you'll have a compressor that only lasts 10 years instead of, you know, 20 or maybe even longer like it was designed to. Uh, it's extremely important to get all the air out of the system and do a proper, you know, dehydration procedure here. So, anyway, I hope that information is helpful. It's extremely important at the end of the day. The thing that I try to emphasize as much as possible is that the quality of the installation of your product is by far the most important aspect. You know, I hear people oftentimes ask, what's the best brand out there? Well, you know, there certainly are some differences between manufacturers, and some are better than others, you know. But it's not a huge difference. What is a huge difference is the quality of your installation. And if the product is installed properly in full accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations and you follow the proper procedures like I've talked about here, uh, there's no reason why your product can't go at least 20 years uh, with, uh, with very little maintenance in between. So anyway, I hope that the information has been helpful. If you'd like to go ahead and hire Ally to install a ductless mini split for you, you can call me. My name's James and my number is 206-604-0092. Thanks.